Guys, welcome back for another episode of Dark Horse Rowing. And today we are talking about core strength, why it's so important, why planks aren't just the answer for core strength, and also an explanation as to why we spend so much time talking about sandbags as a great way of developing strength. Um, so let's get into it. Why do we like core strength for the movement of rowing? Well, your trunk is really your transmission. Because if you think about it, at the end of the day, you are using your legs to push the machine away down at your feet, but you have to relay it up your body and to the handle, which means that your trunk, this, becomes the relay of power. And if you don't have the ability to maintain strength and structure under load or under duress, then you are not going to be able to transfer power to the handle of the machine. And that is why we love sandbags so much. Now, if you guys notice, we've got the, my, our M-Pack here, right? This is our fantastic little travel and strength tool. Um, you can take it with you anywhere. It's a backpack with bladders that you fill whenever you get to your location for your strength work. But the point being, if I need to work to turn on my erectors, to turn on my glutes, to turn on my hamstrings, then carrying a bag in my front rack is one of the best ways to achieve that strength. When I program strength training for people, or when I'm programming a strength program for a rower, one of my biggest concerns is making sure that they have the trunk strength to relay the power from their big strong legs, which, which rowers are known for, up the trunk and to the handle. Because the one and the greatest issue that I see in people on this machine is this. It's the lack of posture that connects their trunk to the handle. Now there's an argument to be made for distributing load over the curvature of the spine. Now that's all well and good, but what we want to think about is being able to maintain good posture and neutral posture. That means not broken in either direction. That means a nice neutral curve of the spine, but being able to maintain that for a long period of time. And it's exactly why we talk about a lot of sandbag work. I want to see you guys spending a lot of time getting a sandbag into a front rack, doing lots of carries, and when I mean carry, I mean just hold and nice controlled walks, thinking heel to toe, so that I squeeze my butt as I walk, right? Squeezing my butt, and it's my butt, and then the pull of the hamstring that's moving my leg. Why I'm talking about that is because that gets my glutes firing, get, gets my erectors firing, and it's why I also don't like an underhand carry because that does, I can just sit in my hips like this. I can dump into my pelvis, which is an issue that ha people have on this machine anyways. So I'm talking cross body carries, right? I'm bear hugging this thing, and I'm gonna do a lot of carrying here. I can also do some squatting, right? And those erectors have to work to maintain core strength. A plank in no way gives you that same dynamic ability. All you're doing in a plank is just hanging out in place. And frankly, you can cheat out of a plank by engaging into the scaps or pushing the scaps away or sinking into the scaps or piking your butt or all sorts of pelvis stuff that can happen in a plank. In my opinion, sandbag work crushes planks as far as developing midline stability. Now, again, the reason that it's so important is if we come to the machine, you have to understand if you take a look at the profile view over here as I'm moving. So when I am on the machine and I'm actually taking strokes, again, the force is being produced down here. I'm pushing into the foot stretcher, right? I'm using my leg to drive against the machine, but nothing happens. If I'm not holding the handle, then I'm just pushing myself through space and time. To get the machine to register the work, I have to push against the machine and move the handle effectively. And to do that, if I have sloppy posture, guess what? I don't have the strength to hold on to the handle. And if I'm broken and overextended, then I'm going to be loading too much into my spine, which is why I just want nice neutral posture, neutral pelvis, but the ability to brace and swing my trunk Right? Because that is my relay of power. It's one of the biggest issues that I see with rowers 
is that they don't have any trunk strength. They don't spend any time with that resistive force having to work against it so that the erectors have to turn on. And all too often, rowers are totally comfortable living here. Well, guess what? I can tell you that over a prolonged period of time, this is not happy for your spine. We do not like living in this space, nor do we like loading here and unloading into extension, right? Loading and flexion, unloading and extension. If you are constantly hinging at one vertebrae over millions of strokes, that's not healthy for the spine. However, if we can learn to brace a nice neutral spine and use the pelvis for movement, right? Now we have a recipe for success, which is why we come back to the sandbag, why we love core strength, why it's so important that we spend time there in order to improve your time on this machine is so that you can create this transmission to do so. Cool? All right, guys, uh, remember, We've got you guys hooked up with the M-Pack, so if you are interested in picking up your own sandbag back slash backpack, go to the mpack.com slash DHR where you'll be able to get your own. And in the comments below, let us know what you think of yours uh, because we really want to hear your experiences, how you use the bag in your training as well. And as always, guys, go sign up for our newsletter, The Hustler's Guide to Rowing, on our website, darkhorserowing.com where you will also find the Dark Horse Academy for coaches to be able to coach their athletes using this machine as a training tool and for athletes at whatever distance or purpose you might need for this machine. Guys, we will see you on the other side.